Our next question, I don't know what the heck it is, but I know it's going to be a good question because John Ruggiero has a daughter at West Point uh, who's crushing it. Uh, so uh, from one military academy to the next, John, you are up with the fabulous Janelle. Great. Hi, Janelle. How are you? Hi. It's it, interesting. I'm listening to your story in the beginning, and it sounds like I've been listening to, I'm like, is this going to be my adult daughter? Is this what's, <laughs> what's coming on? Because she has all the same qualities you were talking about, about challenging and you tell her no and just forget it and scott gave some nice props she's a um she's her second year so she's a yuck at west point and um she has she actually wants to fly believe it or not she actually did air assault this summer and wants to fly but i guess um and we'll see you maybe we'll see you or not we're going to be in texas for the uh west point air force game so you never know. But anyways, my question is this, maybe a little self-serving, but, you know, when you were in the, when you were at Air Force, you were a very small percentage of the female population. Now it's a little bit more than it was. I think it's probably 28 or 30 at West Point. Challenges that you see as growing as a leader, especially for someone like that, how did, what did you overcome? And then how did that translate into what you're doing today? So one of the things I teach in some of my workshops and has come out of kind of the warrior's edge work and research we've done with high performing teams is that the number one constrictor of your potential is you've heard of FOMO, right? Fear of missing mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. Fo is FOPO. The top constrictor for your potential mm -hmm. is called FOPO. And that means fear of people's opinions. Right. And the more you live inside your head, and especially if you're like an outlier or you're, you know, like a, a female in a, like a, a male dominated um, profession, FOPO will hold you back, right? You'll always be second guessing your capabilities because you're different, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if we sit inside those thoughts, here's the thing about FOPO. The majority of the time, it's what we think other people think of us. There's no truth to it. It's just mm -hmm. a creation inside our mind. And what I have found is when I live in that space, and I have in my life, um, I'm much better at it now. And I wish I would have learned some of these skill sets earlier in my career. But when you sit in that second guessing space, what you're really doing is you are failing to reach out into your challenge and come and, and, and like risk uh, spaces of your life, right? I kind of see like a bullseye, like your comfort zone is kind of the center. And then you have a challenge ring and you have a fear ring. Mm -hmm. And like, where do you live your life? And if you listen to FOPO, you're just going to be inside that comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're different, you have to step outside your comfort zone, right? Because most of the time, other people aren't inviting you in, <laughs> right. Right? right? Like it gets overrun by the group think by like, you know, these environments, or at least that's been my experience. Mm -hmm. And so I noticed that I was more risk-taking, more higher performing when mm -hmm. I could filter through those thoughts and just focus on the reason why I was doing, or, you mm -hmm. know, in these environments versus being so worried about what other people were going to think when I did something. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. It's interesting. It's an yeah. interesting thought. But she has no boundaries. My daughter has no boundaries, but I've seen some, you know, some of the challenges that are coming up that I can see them being large challenges for her. So it's, it's, it's interesting, but it translates right into what we all do every day in terms of who we manage and who we lead and, and what we can see with the when we're developing people within our own businesses. So thank you. Sure, for sure. And another um, thing for your daughter, you know, a lot of times we operate in this space where we want to like ask permission. Mm -hmm. And um, if she sounds like she's, you know, very similar to having, you know, my kind of grit and determination and mindset, um, I would always be of the mindset of, well, let me, let me ask for forgiveness, <laughs> right? That's like, her. no, yeah, that's absolutely her. Yep. yep. Yeah, like bring your own chair. If you're not invited to the table, like I'll just bring my own chair. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, hey, you know, I'm here. I'm here to contribute. Like I'm here to serve. I'm here to kind of like bring my full self to each moment. And I'm not going to get inside my head about what you think about my presence here. Right. right. I'm going to anchor on the reason why. And, um, 
you know, a great illustration to that. If you haven't read it, uh, uh, I think Scott's familiar. I was Rolling Stone did an uh, article on some phenomenal article. Oh my God, so good. Yeah, if you read that, like it really demonstrates how I, I, I led a group of women that actually solved an international crisis and we almost didn't because no one would listen to us. Um, we were very much dismissed um, because of a, like our, um, our newness in the realm of chemical weapons. I was not, I was a pilot, right? And, mm-hmm. but I was a strategist and I could think through big problems, but I wasn't a chemical weapons expert. And this was a chemical weapons problem that needed to be solved. And so it was, we were very much dismissed. Um, but luckily we persevered, right? And through an environment that was telling us no, that was telling us we had a dumb idea that was telling us that it was impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, because of, I think the mindset, because of taking risks along the way, we were ready for this moment. And Mm -hmm. also because we weren't, we didn't succumb to the narratives and the voices outside. We just focused on the reason we were doing this mission. Right. Let's go back down. Yep. Great. That's awesome. I'm going to have to read that article then. I'm definitely going to have to look it up. Oh, so good. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Great talking to you. Kathy, if you 